In the heart of Brazil, amidst the bustling streets of Rio de Janeiro, lies a mystery that has perplexed the world for over half a century. A mystery so bizarre, so enigmatic, it feels like it's straight out of a sci-fi novel. Meet Manuel Pereira da Cruz and Miguel José Viana, two electronic technicians from Campos dos Goitacazes, ordinary men, whose story took an extraordinary turn. August 20, 1966, a young boy, flying his kite on the tranquil Ventum Hill, stumbles upon a chilling scene. There, lying side by side on the grassy slope, were the bodies of Manuel and Miguel. But this was no ordinary scene. What baffled the authorities and ignited a firestorm of theories was what they wore, lead masks, masks typically used for protection against radiation. What were they doing with these masks in such a remote location? What were they protecting themselves from? This discovery would soon become one of Brazil's most perplexing unsolved mysteries. A tale of intrigue, speculation, and mystery that continues to haunt the annals of true crime to this day. Join me as we unravel the enigma of the lead masks case, a journey into the unknown, where every clue raises more questions than answers. Who were Manuel Pereira da Cruz and Miguel José Viana, two men whose fate would intertwine with one of the most baffling mysteries of our time? Hailing from Campos dos Goitacazes, a bustling city in Rio de Janeiro state, both Manuel and Miguel were skilled electronic technicians, known for their expertise in their field. They lived lives that seemed ordinary, yet their end was anything but. Manuel, a family man, and Miguel, known for his quiet demeanor, shared not just a profession but a deep interest in electronics and perhaps the mysteries of the unknown. Their last known journey began on August 17, 1966. The two men embarked on a trip from Campos dos Goitacazes to the vibrant city of Rio de Janeiro. But what was the purpose of their trip? Was it a routine venture, or were they driven by something more mysterious? They boarded a bus to Rio, a journey that many thought would be just another work-related trip. Little did anyone know, this journey would lead them to Ventum Hill and into the annals of unsolved mysteries. What were they seeking in Rio? What led them to that lonely hill? Stay with me, as we delve deeper into the last known movements of Manuel and Miguel, in a story where every detail adds to the enigma. The discovery on Ventum Hill was not just chilling, it was laden with enigmas. At the heart of it all were two lead masks, lying ominously beside Manuel and Miguel. Lead masks, typically used for protection against radiation, especially in industrial settings. But here, on a remote hilltop, their presence was not just out of place, it was utterly baffling. What were these two electronic technicians protecting themselves from? But the masks weren't the only items found. A water bottle, suggesting they planned to stay for some time. Wet towels, which only deepened the mystery and a notebook, perhaps the most cryptic clue of all. Inside the notebook, a note, not just any note, but one that read like a piece from a spy novel, 1630 be at the specified location, 1830 in just capsules, after the effect protect metals await signal mask. What did this mean? Were they waiting for a signal? And what were these capsules they mentioned? This cryptic message paints a picture of a planned event, one shrouded in secrecy and perhaps danger. Were they part of something larger, something beyond our understanding? Each clue left behind on that hilltop only adds layers to the mystery, a mystery that we will continue to unravel. Stay with me, as we delve into the investigation that tried to piece together this perplexing puzzle. As news of the bizarre discovery on Ventum Hill spread, the investigation began, shrouded in as much mystery as the case itself. The police and coroners faced a scene that seemed more like fiction than reality. Two men, lying peacefully, with no visible signs of struggle or violence. The lead masks, the cryptic note, all of it, presented more questions than answers. The autopsies of Manuel and Miguel were crucial, yet, they yielded no clear answers. There were no signs of violence, no obvious cause of death. The bodies showed no traces of trauma, and the toxicology reports. Inconclusive. The lack of conclusive evidence was baffling. Were they poisoned? If so, the poison left no trace. Was it a sudden, natural cause? The lack of physical evidence suggested otherwise. The investigation faced challenges from the start. The lack of eyewitnesses, the perplexing nature of the clues, and the growing media attention only added to the pressure. As we delve deeper into this enigma, the mystery only deepens. What happened on that hill remains a question that has puzzled minds for decades. Stay tuned, as we explore the theories that have attempted to explain the unexplainable. In the absence of concrete answers, the lead masks case has become a breeding ground for theories, each more intriguing than the last. First, the theory of a scientific experiment gone awry. Could Manuel and Miguel have been conducting a radiation experiment? The lead masks suggest a need to shield themselves from something. But what? And why choose such a remote location? Then, there's the spiritualist or esoteric angle. Some believe their deaths were linked to a ritual or spiritual practice. The cryptic note, the specific timings mentioned, it all seems to hint at something beyond the realm of the ordinary. 
and perhaps the most outlandish of all, the UFO and extraterrestrial theories. At the time of their deaths, there were numerous UFO sightings in the area. Did Manuel and Miguel encounter something otherworldly on Vintum Hill? Were they waiting for a signal from above? Each theory adds a layer of complexity to the case. From the realms of science to the mysteries of the unknown, the lead mask's case continues to be a puzzle that challenges our understanding of the world. What do you think happened on that hilltop in 1966? As we peel back the layers of this enigma, the truth remains elusive. Up next, we'll explore the cultural and historical context of 1960s Brazil to see if it sheds any light on this mystery. To truly grasp the lead mask's case, we must journey back to Brazil in the 1960s, a time of rapid cultural and scientific change. The 1960s in Brazil were a period of transformation. The country was experiencing a cultural revolution, marked by a surge in artistic and musical expression. It was a time when traditional norms were being challenged, and new ideas were emerging. This era also saw significant advancements in science and technology. The space race was in full swing and the fascination with the cosmos and the unknown was at an all-time high. Could this atmosphere of scientific curiosity have influenced Manuel and Miguel's actions? Now, let's talk about the public reaction and media coverage. The discovery of the bodies on Ventum Hill quickly captured the nation's attention. Newspapers and TV stations were abuzz with theories and speculations. The public was fascinated and horrified in equal measure. Rumors and theories spread like wildfire each more sensational than the last. From ordinary citizens to experts, everyone had a theory, but no one had answers. The lead mask's case remains a captivating chapter in Brazil's history, a mystery that continues to intrigue and perplex. Next, we'll explore how this case has been revisited in modern times and its lasting impact on popular culture. Decades have passed since the lead mask's case first baffled the world, yet it continues to spark curiosity and inspire new investigations. In recent years, there's been a resurgence of interest in the case. Documentaries, podcasts, and online sleuths have all tried to unravel the mystery. New technologies and investigative techniques have offered fresh perspectives. But the case remains as enigmatic as ever. The enduring intrigue of the lead mask's case has also seeped into popular culture. It's inspired books, movies, and TV shows, each offering its own interpretation of the events on Ventum Hill. These works reflect our fascination with the unknown and our desire to find answers to the unanswerable. Even in the realms of art and music, the echoes of this mystery can be felt. Artists and musicians have drawn inspiration from the story, using it as a canvas to explore themes of mystery, the supernatural, and the human quest for understanding. The Lead Mask's case is more than just an unsolved mystery. It's a cultural phenomenon that continues to captivate and inspire. As we move to conclude our journey into this enigma, let's reflect on its enduring impact and the questions it still poses. As we reach the end of our journey into the lead mask's case, we're left with more questions than answers. This enduring mystery, born on a quiet hill in Rio de Janeiro, continues to perplex and fascinate. Despite the passage of time, the deaths of Manuel Pereira da Cruz and Miguel José Viana remain shrouded in mystery. Was it a scientific experiment, a spiritual ritual, or something even more extraordinary? The truth remains elusive, hidden in the shadows of the past. But now, I turn to you, my viewers. What are your thoughts on this baffling case? Do you have a theory that could shed light on this enigma? Share your ideas in the comments below. Let's keep the conversation going and maybe, together, we can inch closer to the truth. And stay tuned for a special bonus segment. After the video has been up for a while, I'll be diving back into your theories and comments. We'll explore your insights and discuss how they might fit into this intricate puzzle. If you enjoyed this deep dive into one of history's most intriguing mysteries, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content. Your support helps us uncover more stories and keep these mysteries alive. Thank you for joining me on this journey. Until next time, keep questioning, keep wondering, and who knows, maybe one day, we'll uncover the truth behind the lead mask's case.